السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد Brothers and sisters We all know the current situation in our country and around the world Especially our brothers and sisters in Italy and then in China in Europe and around the world we know the situation the death toll is rising up at this time in order to strengthen ourselves to be optimistic about whatever is happening around us we need to understand and we need to learn go through back in the history and learn the experience of our forefathers we are young Maybe this is the first time we are experiencing this. We have never experienced a pandemic or epidemic in our lifetime. But the world is old. The world has experienced many pandemics, many epidemics. Our forefathers really faced those challenges. And they successfully managed to face those challenges that's why the humanity survived the world is surviving we as human beings are the roof the life of this entire world our actions matter our response matters how we going to face when almighty allah tests us with these challenges and calamities and disease it is in a way it is a test that we need to rethink and revisit our principles the purpose of our existence another way it is a punishment from almighty allah so that we can get back to him repent to him and try to rectify our approach towards him and towards his creation so if you go back in the history there have been from the first century right up till 21st century there have been many pandemics and epidemics and the death toll if you look at the numbers of people who have died in those epidemic and pandemics is unimaginable in the late first century there was a antonian uh, plague what which took place there were 5 million which is history have recorded about 5 million people died and then in the 7th century and in the end of 7th century uh, half is through 7th century there was japanese smallpox about 1 million people died plague of justinian this is the roman byzantine emperor which took place in the 5th century and it continued in many stages it continued in many stages even at that time even our sahaba in time of umar radiyallahu anhu where the, the, the area of Sham, the Jerusalem, Palestine, the Syria, the present Syria, it was largely affected. If you go through that, there's about 30 to 40 million people, 30 to 50 million people who have died in that plague. There was many intervals in between, but that plague continued for many years, 25 to 30 years. And then in 13th century, this is the large number of death toll which is recorded. It is, it is named as Black Death. In 1347 it started and it continued for many years. About 200 million people died. World has experienced many pandemics and epidemics. But one thing we can notice in that. And even in the 15th century, the world, small box, the new world, the small box, what you call it, there was 56 million people who died there. Then the great plague of London, 100,000 people died. Italian plague in 1600, 1 million people died. And if you go through, in this, even in our century, 2015, there was mass, Ebola, SARS, HIV, AIDS, up till today, 35 million people have died. And the Asian flu, about 1.1 million people have died. And the Spanish flu, if you go through, the Spanish flu which took place in the 19th century, 1980, about 40 to 50 million people have died. 
So what we try to, we must try to understand here and we learn a lesson here that there is hope. There have been a very pathetic and bad situation, world and humanity have responded to it and they have been successful. Europe took about 100 years after the Spanish, you know, uh, flu, that which is the Spanish uh, plague which took place, 100 years to recover, to regain the population. It is there is a system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He has kept in this world that time to time there are going to be plagues, there are going to be epidemics and pandemics which is going to take place in the world. Then we as human beings are going to be tested. Our humanity is going to be tested. Our character is going to be tested. Our faith is going to be tested. And then our spirituality is going to be tested. Our commitment towards Almighty Allah. Our commitment towards Allah and our commitment towards humanity and the creation of Allah will be tested here. So let us all be optimistic. And if you go through the history, our Sahaba Karam have faced this. And one one practice, a practical approach in all these epidemics and pandemics which has worked out, that is isolation, quarantine, keep ourselves, maintain distance, so we have to reduce socializing, even the time of Sahabas which took place 18th year after the Hijrah, where Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anh, sent the army, sent a group of Sahabas in order to fight with the Byzantine Empire. Where Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah radiallahu anh, was one of the Sahabas who was being given glad tidings by our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, assurance that he will definitely enter Jannah. He was there in the battlefield. At that time this plague broke out. It's known as Imawaz, Amawaz, Ta'un Amawaz, very popular uh, Ta'un which took place. It is in history recorded the Justinian plague which took place in different intervals. The same thing. This one of the uh, Justinian plague is known as Amawas, Imawas, according to history which has been recorded. How did they respond to it? My respected brothers, this is something we all have to understand. How did the Sahaba Karam learn through the experience of others? How did they consult each other? How did they go about? And if you look at it, they were in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where Abdurrahman ibn Awf radiallahu alayhi comes and he explains about the hadith when there is a plague, how should, how should we respond to it? And how should we practically respond to it? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this is in Bukhari, this is a very authentic hadith. Abdurrahman ibn Awf is one of the sahabas who has been given glad tidings as well. He comes and solves the problem. There was a difference of opinion among the sahabas. How do we respond to it? How do we manage this situation? My respected brother, Abdurrahman al says, when there is a plague is being break out, there is an epidemic in somewhere, those who are in that place, they should not leave. Those who are out should not enter that place. This hadith was very clear. Abil Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in another hadith, you should run away from leprosy, the way you run away from a lion. The way you fear a lion and you stay away, Likewise, you need to stay away from the leprosy. So what does this mean? It shows that there is a power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to these epidemics, these plagues and these flus and these viruses. It can spread from one person to another person with Allah's command, with Allah's will. So the sunnah that our beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have taught us is that we maintain distance. And it has worked for China. China, it has worked for China. What is happening in China now? The number is reducing. The number is reducing. The patients are reducing. They are recovering. What did they do? They put the entire country under lockdown. The whole country was locked down. It is really difficult. We are going to have other uh, problems by locking down the country. We're going to have other problems by shutting down everything. Economically, we're going to have. There are really desperate people, poor people, daily wages. They're going to suffer. But for the betterment, for the larger benefit of the entire humanity, entire community, we need to do this. We need to actually voluntarily do this 
in order to protect the humanity, the interest of the larger community and humanity in large. Here, my respected brothers, we need to work together, cooperate, help each other. If Allah has blessed you with excess wealth, if Allah has blessed you with a lot of wealth, and if Allah has given you, you share with your neighbors. Try to share with the needy and desperate, with the daily wages, where they can survive, they can go through this. This one week is being very difficult. May Allah protect. If this condition continues for months, it's going to be really difficult. But definitely, Allah is there with us. Definitely, Allah is there with us. What I'm trying to say, historically, world have faced this. The humanity have faced this. And we and our forefathers have overcome this situation. So we can definitely overcome this situation by cooperating to one another. I want to go back to that Imawas and O Amawas, Ta'un Amawas, the incident what happened. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, there is a lot of lesson to learn there. When Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu came with a lot of senior sahabas, he came there before entering the Syria, before entering he was outside, then he get the message of the Ta'un, he get the message of this plague, is there around there. He said there in Kansar. First, he invited the senior Sahabas, the Muhajirun, the senior Muhajirun, Muhajirun, those who migrated before the victory of Makkah and who sacrificed and who had spent the wealth in the beginning stage of Islam. He consulted them, they have two different opinions. Among them, there was a group saying, No, we should enter, we have come for a purpose. Allah Qadr, we should remain here, we should enter and be with the army of Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah Among them there was another group said, no, we need to leave. This is a plague, we need to leave here. Then Umar Muqattab excused them, said, okay, you all can go away and call the Ansar, the people of Medina, who helped Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who seniors, when it comes to Islam, they have, they have helped. They have protected, they have given, you know, shelter to Sahabas, the Muhajirun and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Their pieties among the Sahabas, the category, the level, first the Muhajirun, Ansar, Ashrat al-Mubashara comes, those who participate in Battle of Badr comes, then the Muhajirun comes in, then you get the Ansar comes in, then you come those who embrace Islam after the victory of Makkah. My respected brother, then Umar radiallahu anhu, invited them, the Ansar, and got their consulting, I think he, con he was consulting them. What their opinion? Even amongst them, there was two group of people who was divided into two. There's one group said, we need to go back. Other group said, no, we should remain here. Again, Umar radiallahu said, okay, you can go away. So, he invited the elderly Quraysh who, who embraced Islam after the victory of Makkah. Mashiach of Quraysh. Invited those seniors, they are when it comes to the category of the Sahaba, they are very low, but when it comes to the experience of facing the situations, they have many experience than these Sahaba. Then he invited them, and when he consulted these elders of Quraysh who embraced Islam, who migrated after the victory of Makkah, what happened? They were unanimously saying, Umar ibn Khattab, radiallahu anhu, we need to go back. We cannot stay here. Only way we can protect the senior Sahabas, these companions, we can only protect them. We need to get back. My respected brother, Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, after this long consultation with a different group of people, with a different category, some of them, their piety level is very high. They are very closer to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have got blessing, they have got the glad tidings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that they were definitely into Jannah. So all these people, he consulted, their piety level is different, people with experience, now he comes to a conclusion. Now he comes to addition, he says now, we are tomorrow morning, first thing, we are getting back. Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah radiallahu an, one of the most pious sahaba who has been given glad tidings that about that he will enter Jannah among the Ashrat al-Mubashara. Abu Baidah ibn Jarrah radiyallahu anhu, he was very really upset. He said, Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu anhu, Amir al-Mu'minin, are you going away from one, are you going away from the Qadr of Allah? Umar radiyallahu anhu was very really disappointed. He said, I wish this sentence, these words 
which shouldn't have come from you. I wish that I had a such a high regard to you, a person like you, so much piety, so much closer to Almighty Allah and Rasulullah, you do not understand this situation. Then he explains to them, if you have been given an option, you, agree, you have a flock of goats and sheep, if you are given an option, there is one valley which is green, which is really green, and then you have another valley that is, which is barren. Which one will you choose? Definitely you are going to choose the valley which is green, which has the grass, which they can graze well. You are not going to choose the barren one. You are not going to choose the dry one. Because that is what I am doing here. It is the Qadr of Allah. I am going from one Qadr of Allah to another Qadr. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anh, explains. My respected brothers, this is a very important lesson that we want to learn. Uh, we need to emphasize here. There are people who are very pious, but they do not have practical, pragmatic knowledge about the current situation, the medical situation, the political situation. So, because of their piety and they are unaware about the current situation, their opinion might not be the most correct opinion. There might be people who are less in the piety. They are not in the category of those people who are really pious, but they have more experience. They have a lot of knowledge about, they have lots of knowledge about the current situation. They have a lot of knowledge about the medical uh, situation which is happening now, the political situation which is happening, economic situation is happening. You see the way Umar ibn Khattab consulted different group of people who have different expertise and he decided. I want to say about another thing which is coming to my remembrance is that when it comes to the battle of, battle of Khanda, the trench, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not listen to the senior Sahaba. He, he took the opinion of Salman al-Farsi radiallahu who was a new Muslim but he had experience of warfare. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took his advice and that was his decision. So my respected brothers, here the piety who his religious knowledge have got nothing to do when it comes to the practical, pragmatic solutions that we are facing. The combination of the piety, the combination of practical knowledge together that we can arrive to a most appropriate and most correct decision in our life. So my respected brothers, Abu Baida ibn Jarrah radiallahu and Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anh, left and then he wrote a letter to Abu Baida ibn Jarrah radiallahu anh, to come back and just cutting it short, he refused. He said, I'm not going to come back. I'm going to stay. Please excuse me as Amir al-Mu'mineen. You know, I have to obey you, but please excuse me. Abu Bayd ibn Jarrah radiallahu anh, he was afflicted with that. He passed away. And then comes Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu anh, very close to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu anh, he was walking with him out and he was telling, when you come back, you want, you're not going to see me. I, I love you. This is the saying of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu was also was affected. Then Amr ibn As radiallahu anhu was appointed as the, 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 the Amir, the leader of that company, the, the, the army. Amr ibn As radiallahu anhu, he had a lot of experience amongst the Quraysh. He had a lot of experience, political experience. He had a lot of experience when it comes to international affairs. He was a statement of Quraysh who used to negotiate and discuss. He took a decision that he's going to separate them. He's going to keep the people away, distant, isolate one another, take them far away, the top of the mountain, and he safeguarded the many khans. Even in that Amawas, in the history, whenever we speak about plague, epidemics, pandemics in Islamic history, this Ta'un Amawas is always mentioned because this experience of the Sahabas and Tabi'un. Many people passed away. My respected brothers and sisters in Islam, what I am trying to emphasize here, the history of pandemics here, world have experienced many epidemics and pandemics. And Alhamdulillah, our forefathers survived because of that we are here today. They really faced that. 
and how can we through our teaching of Islam the guidance that the legacy that our forefathers left behind how can we help one another and help the world the humanity here here we all understand situation emotion masjid is closed down no day no juma we are isolated lot of frustration my dear special brothers we are rewarded for this we are rewarded for this we are taking these measures in order to protect humanity in order to protect a life in order to protect every life matters insha allah we will come over it we will come over it for now there is about 11000 people have died due to this uh, covid 19 11000 plus people in sri lanka still up till now may allah protect us there is about 76 people affected with this disease and there are lot 200 odd people who are under observation in the hospital more than 3000 people has been kept in quarantine and observation but alhamdulillah up till now there is no death recorded in sri lanka definitely inshallah we as sri lankans we can definitely uh, you know face this but my appeal to all of you at this situation as sri lankans and global citizens i appeal to all of you there are a lot of people struggling there are a lot of people having financial difficulty they do not have the daily bread just to survive the necessities so let us come out if you can give only 100 rupees if you can only give maybe 1000 rupees if you can only give maybe 1 kilo or 1 kg of dal please come out and support there are a lot of organizations that come forward especially for my knowledge in sri lanka three organization have got together muslim aid sri lanka uh, muslim council of sri lanka lanka minaret uh, group of people they are get, got together and they are trying to implement look for the needy and poor and desperate and they are distributing dry ration and essential goods what is need to keep them and we know the curfew is going to be continuing in kalambu gampaha and uh, in putran district it's going to be till tuesday morning and then again from 2 pm onwards other places is going to be till monday morning and again after 2 pm it's going to continue maybe for another week or two or three let us all try make use of this time go forward what has happened at this moment is that allah is testing us is testing our patience we can only repent to him go back to him as human being we are weak we are helpless this is what it is proving Allah is Ali Al Qadir. We need to all separate a time, have a timetable, read a lot of Quran, do a lot of khatam, remember for remember our forefathers, remember the parents, remember our teachers. This is a good time. Let us go back, take the history and learn and read. Remember the Sahaba Karam. Learn about their life. Spend time with your children. Spend time with your spouse, and communicate. Use this nyama of technology in order to reach one another. encourage one another to be optimistic this is something which is need and this is my appeal to all of you so my dear respected brothers and sisters in islam and sisters in humanity let us try and face this challenge with the best of our ability encourage one another support one another my uh, final uh, appeal today to all of you there are a lot of people asking many questions about many things uh, certain things what i say I uh, ask less question if that is better for us by asking too many question we going to complicate the life use your intellect and think rationally use the knowledge which you have there don't unnecessary ask unnecessary questions there is a curfew just i am giving you example there is a curfew but people ask can we say azan in the masjid in last week these are questions not to be asked There have been many curfew. Azan was called out in the masjid. Everybody understand Azan is called out to remind about the time of salah. It reminds us, and it is a shi'ar, a symbol of Islam. And there is no uh, ban for saying Azan in our country. So let us use this opportunity. Don't ask unnecessary questions and complicate life here. Be simple. Help each other. Support each other. Unite. Let us go back. and i am i am really pleased to say that 
Hema's group has come forward and they are ready to give the 158 room, they are one of their a luxury hotel for quarantine. This is, this is what our Muslim brothers and sisters, our Sri Lankans are coming up. They are stepping up and trying to face this challenge. May Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. Keep all of us safe and those who are affected, may Allah give them cure uh, and recovery very soon. And may Allah protect their humanity all over the world. And inshallah, soon this plague or pandemic, epidemic is going to be history. Who we be survive inshallah, we're going to be a stronger, we're going to be a stronger nation, a stronger a citizen of this world. We're going to be more loyal to Almighty Allah, more grateful to Almighty Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept. Allahumma inna nas'alukal afwa wal afia wal mu'afata al-da'ima fi al-deen wa al-dunya wa al-akhara innaka ala kul shay'in qadir. Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min jahdi al-bala wa darq al-shaqa wa su'i al-qadha wa shamatati al-a'da. اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من البرص والجنون والجزام ومن سيء الأسقام يا أمان الخائفين آمنا مما نخاف يا أمان الخائفين سلمنا مما نخاف يا أمان الخائفين نجنا مما نخاف صلى الله تعالى وسلم على سيدنا محمد النبي لمه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته